Hi, I'm Todd Clippinger, and welcome to the American Craftsman Workshop. Not all of my projects are the really cream jobs where it's all high-end woodworking. A lot of times I'm using products like this melamine board that you see uh, to do some very common pedestrian type projects such as create uh, cabinet doors for a commercial project. Maybe a coffee kiosk or a, a lawyer's office. These are all past projects that I've had. Now, although these aren't the dream jobs, they still do a couple of important things. Number one, it helps me pay my bills. And number two, something as simple as cutting melamine can be very challenging actually because it tends to chip out a lot. And I'm going to show you what I do to get uh, relatively chip-free cuts. I do very well. I can't say that they're entirely chip-free, but, but they're relatively uh, very much chip-free cuts. And I'm going to show you the, the methods that I use and the tools that I use in order to accomplish this. First of all, the blade that I use, I particularly use a Freud blade. It's an 80-tooth blade, and it is specifically designated as a double-sided laminate and melamine cutting blade. Now, besides the blade, there are a couple of other things that factor in cr to create a relatively chip-free cut. Uh, first of all, your table saw should be tuned up. And another thing that helps is a zero-clearance throat plate. And then on top of that, it really helps if you have plenty of support for the in-feed and out-feed. You want to feed the material as smoothly as you can across the surface of the table saw. You don't want it to waver side to side or up or down uh, because at that point, you, you stand the risk of causing some chips. So um, I have this uh, sample board here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make a couple cuts and we'll see what we can get out of it. This is my hand feather board, and what I like to do with it is I also use it to set the uh, blade height. Okay, let's take a look here. I'm gonna I'm gonna label these one and two. And we'll see here. These came out just nearly perfect. Now one of the things is I have an, a bit of an advantage because I'm using a big jet cabinet saw and it's uh, a very stable table saw. And it's very easy to produce a relatively chip-free cut. And once again, I don't want to say entirely chip-free, but boy, I'll tell you what, it does good enough that it's, it's just nearly chip-free. So this has produced an extremely clean cut. And what I'm going to do, though, to kind of level the playing field here is I'm going to take this blade out of this table saw, and I'm going to put it in a table saw more like you, you're probably going to be using, or many of the woodworkers are going to be using in their, their garage and their basement shops, which is my DeWalt uh, portable job site saw. So let me take the table saw blade out of here and put it in the uh, DeWalt portable saw and set it up, and I'll see you on the other side when I get it set up. All right, guys, now I've got my DeWalt job site saw set up, and this is a saw often or something similar to this that probably a lot of you are, this is all you have. So, so it's very easy for me to make a great clean cut at my big jack cabinet saw because it has the heavy cast iron top and there's a lot of weight there and there's three belts uh, transferring the power of the, the motor to the blade. 
So it's a very smooth running table saw. But the magic really is in the blade uh, for making this clean cut. And really outside of getting a good blade like this or something that's dedicated to making clean cuts in laminate and melamine, you're probably gonna continue to struggle. That was the problem that I had uh, as I was doing remodel projects. Uh, I, I just I just continually struggled and was confounded as to why I couldn't get a clean cut. And then I, uh, when I was in the supply store, I found there's a specific blade for cutting melamine and laminate, and it's well worth the money just to buy the blade. And I think they're about 80 bucks, but uh, that all depends, and and it depends on at what time you're viewing this video compared to when I made it too. So prices may vary to location, and over time prices are probably going to go up. Anyways. Well, we're gonna go, I, I've already got my table saw set up, so let me make two more cuts, and then we're gonna examine and see how clean it is compared to the first two cuts. And I've, I've labeled uh, all the sides of my board, one and two. These were the first two cuts, and we'll do three and four right now. One of the biggest uh, issues with this tabletop is the drag on it. And what I recommend is that you use either wax paper and rub your table saw down uh, the top to slick it up, or I, I like to use a uh, Bostic uh, top coat. And um, actually, I didn't even put any on. So I guess point being, this is probably going to be a good representation of what a lot of you guys are going to have to deal with uh, on your own table saws. L, and another thing, when you're cutting, Notice I marked, I marked down, and then on the other side, of course, it's up. You always want to make sure the same side is down for all the cuts because the top's always going to be the cleanest side as the teeth cut down, and you want any tear out and chip out to be in the back and not, not the front. That way you can hide it inside the cabinet. Or if it's a shelf, if you're making shelving, then you can hide the chip side uh, on the side that's not seen. Okay, I did notice that... When I was cutting uh, side three, that I did have just a little bit more trouble with maintaining a smooth and even feed rate. And, and I did get just a little bit of chip out there. But on side four, I actually got nearly as clean a cut as on side one and two. Now, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I think on, on side three, where the chip out came from. I could feel that the the board was dragging just a little bit and it and I had it just wasn't quite right and and also right at the end there was a little bit of a, a twist on the blade and and this last part of the cut well, that would have been actually first part of the cut but actually last part of the cut I have some chip out and some right at the beginning here but on side four it's actually very clean and so I'm really I'm really happy with this once it's edge banded and this side goes to the inside of the cabinet. I've got one great clean side and nobody will see anything. And then also a great way to hide any chip out is choose the worst side to put your hinges on because nobody ever sees the hinge side. Basically, once a cabinet door opens, if you put the chips back by the hinges, then at that location, hardly anybody will ever see those because they'll see that leading edge once once you open a cabinet door. So those are some little tricks that you can use to hide uh, any chip out that you get. You know, guys, this is the reality of the situation. This isn't fine woodworking, and there's a certain amount of grace that you're gonna get if you're making cabinet doors out of melamine. And if you don't have a scoring blade, I don't have a scoring blade, I don't have that type of equipment. But, um, you know, the big cabinet shops, they've got the big sliding table saws, and they have the scoring blade, and they have the advantage 
of getting those precision cuts with just nearly zero uh, chip out. But one thing I have found is I've been on plenty of jobs doing installs and finding these high-end cabinet shops uh, with the high-end equipment. I don't know if they're not putting in the proper blades or if they're not using the scoring blades. They actually end up with just as much chip out as I do. So the, the bottom line is I, I just don't think they care. Uh, but I certainly do the best that I can, and I still get a minor amount of chip out. But once this is edge banded, you won't even see it. And um, what tell you what, in fact, let me go ahead and show you how I put edge banding on, and we'll take a look at that edge that's got the chip out and, and see how it looks after the edge banding's on. So I'm going to change uh, camera locations and set up for edge banding, and uh, give me a few minutes to do that. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, guys, I just got done recording the video instruction on how to apply the edge banding to this panel that I was using to show you how to get clean cuts in melamine. But the overall video length is just going to be too long and the video file too large. So what I'm going to do is just leave it as part one is getting a clean cuts in melamine and part two will be to apply the edge banding. So stay tuned for part two.